Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand with your host, Dave D. Join us weekdays. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com. Yeah, welcome to Pattaya, welcome to Thailand and welcome to another sunny day in Asia. And of course, <laughs> in the studio live down here, uh, what can we say? First time in the studio. Welcome to the studio, Darren from Kivisa. How are you doing, sir? Good, mate, yeah? I, I am. It's, uh, it's uh, what do you reckon to the studio? Nice? Oh, lovely, mate. Posh? I like the pink. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I would like to see your wardrobe, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, multicoloured. It's multicoloured. Thanks to God for coming along to the studio. And, of course, uh, we get a lot of questions down here uh, on our websites about different things, different aspects of visas and, and things like that. I mean, let's just sort of sum up a little bit at the moment and just go straight into it, okay? I mean, um, what is the visa situation at the moment in Thailand for people that are here, for let's let's just say let's go for expats at the moment. How how does that stand? Um, expats are, seem to be okay at the moment. Mm-hmm. Retirement visas are being renewed. Uh, they come under the amnesty, so really, in effect, they don't have to renew their visa until the twenty sixth okay. of September. You see, what happened was, um, as we know, a few months ago, the government gave a free amnesty for people to be able to get out of the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, flights weren't available. There was a lot of people stranded. So the government turned around and said, right, okay, well, what we'll do, we'll give you an extra couple of months. So now that runs out on the 26th of September. There was a lot of controversy, wasn't there, about the the, the time date on that? I mean, it's it's sort of, everybody said it was this, and then it was that, and then it was this. I mean, is it definitely now the 26th of September? So I believe. So far? As far as we know, <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, I got that confirmed pretty much just today. Right. You know, as far as they're concerned, they've given five months for free, mm-hmm. and they're not going to give any more, you know, as, which, you know, in, in a way, I can't blame them. I mean, five months, is, I think, is enough time to, to get yourself out if you need to go home. Mm-hmm. Now, so what happens after the 26th if you, you're in dire straits and you can't get out or there isn't? For example... The, the flights, right? We've been talking okay. about flights a little bit earlier before we came on air. I mean, there's very little flights at the moment. Okay. Uh, I mean, what if there's not a flight and they can't get out? What happens? Then what you have to do at the moment is you have to go to your embassy. Mm-hmm. The embassy will give you a letter to say there's no flights available or you're sick or whatever way. Mm-hmm. Um, you come back to immigration. There's also another probably 15 documents needed <laughs> where you stay in, yeah. photographs of the property, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. They will let you, allow you, if you're over, to pay a bit of overstay and then get a one-month extension. So let, 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 let's just put a scenario, and I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just trying to find out, you know, I'm just trying, okay. to, I'm just trying to think. Do it, David. I'm, <laughs> I'm just Everybody trying, else does. <laughs> I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to put it this way, right? I mean, we was on the live feeds the other day on the planes that are arriving and coming uh, from Thailand, okay? okay. Uh, like America, things like there's, there's zilch, there's none, right? So let's just say that you are from America, for example, and you're here and you're on overstay and you've had like the five months overstay and you go to the, the immigration and say, look, you know, there isn't any flights, zero. And there's not going to be any flights until January next year, for example. Just the example, what can they do for you? Nothing. Hmm. Practically nothing. So where yeah. do so where do you stand? Because if there's no flight, she can't get out, and they can't do anything. That are they going to charge you overstay? Hence, what I just said. Then, mm. if if that's the situation, and you know that's to be true, mm. then you can go to your embassy. They'll give you a letter. You take that back to the immigration with a certain mm. amount of documents which they've got on the list, uh-huh. um, and they will give you another month. Okay, and then after that other month, if it's still not there, you have got to do all the process again. Mm, we don't know you yet. You don't know yet. Okay, we don't know yet. Listen, the, the situation is if you can get yourself out. Get yourself out. Get yourself out. Mm. If you don't want to go, find find a way not to go. Yeah, sure. Come and talk to an agent, mm. see if there's anything available. Mm. You know, mm. we, we, we said this the other day, that there is, there is visas there for different ages, for different lengths of time. But you have to talk to agents about it. You mm-hmm. know, the immigration are too busy to sit there filling in on the information. Sure. You know, they've got a lot to do, these people. They're they're frustrated. You know, they're under pressure every day. Mm. You know, so they're, they're, they're not going to give you the information probably I know, that you need. I know before, just winding the clock back a little bit before mm. this happened, I mean, I know that there used to be certain flights for deportees. If I remember that you're the deporting you from Thailand, there were certain flights that would take deportees only. Yeah, I mean, so 
is it is it going to be a situation you think where there's going to be deportees and they're going to lay on special flights because if there's no airlines, how can they do that? Listen, I don't think they've got the manpower to check Chief. Yep. who's got a visa and who hasn't after the 26. Yeah, sure. Until you go to the airport. Absolutely. Okay. If you go to the airport after the 26 and you've no visa, you they will allow you to get on the flight mm -hmm. if you booked a flight, but they will probably, as they said, either maybe you'll get a ban mm. from coming back at least a year. Um, whether that's gone through the cabinet or not, we don't know. Mm. But according to immigration, that's the way it's going to go. But the, at the moment, I mean, I'm, please correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, there's certain people being let into Thailand at the moment, isn't there? Yeah. Um, at the moment, it's because <laughs> it was under pressure. They're allowing people, families mainly, mm. you know, people who are married to Thais, um, people that have got children with a Thai, mm -hmm. you know, or children that are here in school. You know, work permit owners, people that have got businesses here, um, people like teachers, doctors that have got, you know, a contract of employment sure. to show that they can come. They so come people with work permits work. and things like that are allowed yeah, back? Correct. Um, there are also people who, under medical treatment, you know, if they need to get information sure. from their doctors and from Thailand, you know, that, that also works. But as far as tourists is concerned, forget it. You ain't coming back yet. No, there's, I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's no talk for tourists at the moment. I mean, we've know. just we've just sort of read today. I mean, I've just read today a, a quick news bulletin that Phuket is July two thousand twenty one. I mean, you know, I mean, is, is, what do you think of that? Well, th there's talk at the moment with it's not it's not one hundred percent sure yet, but mm. there's talk that they're going to use Phuket and two other islands. As a, a tester, a, a tester, a tester, and a getaway for the more affluent, the more the ri the richer falang, who are going to stay here six months or more. Yeah, but, but that's what you've got to do. I mean, if you're coming over to Thailand and you're coming over for three weeks only, and you've got to spend two weeks in quarantine, it ain't worth it. No, I mean it's, <laughs> it's not just, just not the, worth it's it. It's not just that. I mean, it's the, it's the things you've got to do before you fly. Yeah, yeah. you know, see. getting your COVID reports and you know your fit to fly reports, and who's to say you're not going to get COVID when you're on the plane? Yeah, sure. And stuff like that when you mm. get here. Mm. You know, two weeks of your holidays gone in quarantine, you know, and that's what's putting people off, mm. you know. The the rule that they said that might happen in Phuket and the other islands is you've got to stay in the resort. You have to have a band so they <coughs> can track you all the time and you're not allowed to move out of the resort. Well, why come? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, maybe, might well maybe in, <laughs> you might as well sit in, uh, sit at home in your in your house, put the big screen on, it's fair, open the curtains, and think <laughs> you're at the side of the beach. I tell you what, it's a fair old attraction, though, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, I, mean, I tell you, yeah, yeah, come here, yeah. You can yeah. Sit, you sit in a hotel of our choice for two weeks and charge you for it. You know, it's people are not that desperate. No, no, I don't not. think at the moment. You no. know, I'm, we're at the sharp end. Yeah. We run businesses here. Mm, yeah, sure. We. I'm dealing with these people day in and day out, and what they're saying to me is, look, end of the day, we can come, we can stay in the hotel for two weeks, we can eat the shitty food, mm. we can then go and have Emphasis our holiday. on the shitty. Yes, correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah, because it's their menu. I've seen it. Yeah. Um, and after the two weeks, then you can go and enjoy your holiday. Mm. Well, not many people get more than two weeks holiday anyway. No. You know, and people um, only, have, of course, people only have a certain budget as well, don't they, Darren? I mean, I mean, you know, you know the working class people, we, which we all are, and if we're in the UK or wherever we are, you know, we go to work, we earn our money, we put our money aside, we save enough money to go away for a couple of weeks and have a holiday. I mean, coming to here is just not no, going to no. happen. I mean, I spoke to a friend of mine, Tim, um, on Facebook the other day. He's going to the Canaries. Yeah, he's just booked up for Tenerife. Mm. It's three hundred and three hundred and forty pound for two weeks all in. Yeah, sure. You know, and he said, "Why would I fly fourteen hours to see, come and see my you?" My mate's just done exactly the same. He's gone to Spain. Yeah. Two forty nine. Yeah, two forty nine. I mean, it's 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 nuts. We love the place. You know, there isn't a safer place, I don't think, in the world at the moment mm. than here. No, with the COVID absolutely true. and true. no fighting. And but it's going to be a long time before you know it gets back to what it used to be. And another thing, Dave, as you know, because you've been involved in the nightlife mm. previous, half of the bars are not open. Well, I, so. I, I looked at the, there was a, a guy that actually goes around Patia and counts the bars, believe it or not. Does he? Yeah. He counted. He needs to get a hobby there. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, he's not got a lot to do at the moment. No. But he went yeah. down Walking Street 
on a Saturday night and counted them. Yeah. And there was 19 out of 50 open. Yeah. So it shows, and I mean, you know, they've, you know, they've got to look at what's happening. You just, like I said to you before we came on air, it's an hourglass. You know, it's, it's, it's for these people and all of us, you know, it's an hourglass and when it runs out, it runs out. Yeah. I mean, for people watching this, you know, back in, back in their own country, you know, we want them to understand that it's not nice for them, but it's certainly not nice for us either. Mm. You know, we're, we're here, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, the day after, the day after that. You know, it's True. again, like you said, it's an hourglass. It's an hour, and it's I mean, a massive, 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 from, especially from Patio, a massive knock on effect. Oh, yeah. I mean, knock on effect is just a, it's crazy. You, you, you look at, you know, Walking Street at night time now, it looks like an old shanty town. Mm. You know, it, it was actually meant, you know, the description from somebody very high up who had a visit recently mm. said it looks like an old film set. Yeah. You know, that somebody the discarded. Yeah, yeah the that's, that's what it looks like. And you look at photos before and now. So people, you know, want them to know that it's, it's not all, you know, it's not all bells over here, you know. It's not. A, I mean, we, a rough time. We don't want to sort of, we, we don't, so I don't want to sort of like sway towards the, the, the area of political anything like oh, that. But, but, no, no. But, but I'm going to ask you one question. Cool. Or just one question. <laughs> Do you think it's over-exaggerated? Yes. Yeah, I do as well. Uh, that's yeah. it. That's it. We won't go any further on that because no. we don't want to get into it because it's a massive conversation and everybody has their it, point of view. But I think it's the, well, well, well overrated. For, from a man that's been here, Dave, sixteen years and worked sixteen 12 years, twelve months more than me. Yeah. You know when you see the un, the size of the unemployment, mm. yeah. you know, which is probably t- in the twenty million, um, and you drive down the road and you see people que- queuing up. For three, but that's on top of the that's on top of the people that was unemployed before, Darren. Correct. That's not the people before. We're talking about twenty million now, now, now. not the ones that didn't have anything before. Correct. And you're driving down the road in your car, and you've got a few quid in your pocket, and you're looking down, and you're seeing like three kilometres of people queuing up for free food. Mm. Yeah. Now I ain't never seen that. No. And for me, all right, I'm British. Yeah. But it. It it's strikes. A it strikes a horrible it's chord a killer. in me, you know. And I mean, I, I, years, years, and years ago, when they had the floods in Bangkok, if you if you remember, those the heavy, oh, heavy yeah. floods. Uh, I went with the the, the, the immigration guys, the police, see how and we went up there. We took the speedboats, and we were actually in speedboats around the Sawyers, and in out all the food. Now, when I say that the water was up to the top of the patio doors on these houses, right, and you came into a Sawyer in the boat, yeah. And there wasn't anybody. It was just the water and the houses and the water up to the top of the patio doors. As soon as they heard the boat, I kid you not, hundreds just came from nowhere. And then suddenly you're handing out this food. And I thought, you know, we're helping these people. I, 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 it, it was, it was heart-wrenching, but we're helping these people. But the heart-wrenching bit for me is when we ran out of food and they were still coming. Yeah. That's what, you know, you get a 90-year-old woman that's just waded through the water to the boat and you've got nothing left to give. Sad. That's what's heart-wrenching. But now when you put it into perspective that's happening now, I mean, like you've just said, 20 million plus are unemployed. The knock-on effect is massive. I mean, my wife and her, her family, for example, are up north near Chiang Mai, yeah? Mm. I mean, they had, last month, total money, 5,000 baht. Mm. 5,000 baht for a family of three. I mean, that's just nuts. No. And they get, um, like I said, I'm not going to get there, but as far as I'm concerned, I think the support stinks. Yeah, agreed. Um, I mean, I was reading on, I mean, don't, sorry if it wasn't one of yours, but I was reading on the net um, with regards to homeless people. Mm. Obviously, Patsy is full of them now. Absolutely. It's, I, it's, you know, it's nuts. And there's people complaining about this. Ugh, there's foreigners complaining about what? this. And I'm thinking... Whoa. Get a life. <laughs> you know, this isn't our our place. No. You not. know, th- these, these poor people, are, they're, not, they're not lay on the floor because they want to. Some of them are mentally ill. They can't afford the, you know, the tablets, you know, they've, they're have they out of work. You know, there's all I, I going said to on. one person, I said, actually, I had a little bit of the same conversation and it got me a little bit ratty. And I said, do you realise that you're living in their back garden and they're sleeping in their back garden? So what's the problem? Yeah. You know, they don't understand and I mean when they when they go, Oh, it's full of this and it's full of that, you know, we don't want to get there but but you know, 
they're entitled to do it, mate, and and and, and you've it's got no say in it. No, it's nothing to do with it's us. Nothing to do with us. What's no, you know? And I mean, I'm a, I've always been a um, you know I've always looked after the redemption mm. centre, you know, for kids. Yeah, sure. Uh, I always feel, oh, you know, I give back, you know. That yeah, we, would do, we do the hand to hand, so, you know, yeah. we help them. And we were there, me and the missus were there a couple of weeks ago, and there was a girl had been in, and she dropped off a kid that was 11 days old. Mm-hmm. And they asked why, you know, why? I've got no job. Mm. I've got no money. Mm. I can't afford to feed my child. Mm. It's heartbreaking. Absolutely, it's, it's I mean, terrible. It's, it's you and know, these are real people. These is real stories. The thing, the thing that I look at, Darren, I mean, you know, is uh, I help two people, mm. yeah, and that's all I'm going to help, yeah, which are they're homeless and they've got nothing. I help two people when I can, yeah, yeah? and as far as I'm concerned, that's it because I've, I'm doing my little bit. Yeah. But if everybody did that, it yeah. would, it would make a difference, yeah, you know, and and that's that's the way I look at it, you know, so. Whatever, I'm, and I'm sure that it's going to open up, and I'm sure that things are going to come back to uh, not what they were, but uh, I, I think that it will open up, and I think that the, the tourists will come back. Yeah, Mr. Niels Koloff said a nice thing the other day that it will bounce back. He and did, it, and, it, and it will. You know, it's, it might not be in the near future; it might be what the start of next year, March, April. Well, time. It's human nature, isn't it? It's, it's human nature to bounce back. It's going to come. Um, unfortunately, people that lose the business, there will be people come who come and take over, blah, blah, blah. blah. You know, the tourists will be coming back. Um, the vaccines might be in place. We just don't know. It's an everyday occurrence. But on the visa side, um, tourists, anybody who's used to coming here month on, month off and stuff mm. like that, and they've got no ties to the place, shouldn't even... Consider what about, what about coming back. Is, is, is Cambodia and, and Laos, are they all the same now? Yeah, uh, they're all locked down. They're all locked down. I thought they were going to open up their borders to each other. No, no. Still, Cam- still no, no do. No, Cam- Cambodia's got their own set of rules, which is quite high as well, mm. as far as people, foreigners going in there. Mm. Um, why it's a shit all, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's something like you've got to show $30,000 in the bank or something like that, you know. Yeah. No, that's not my... But still, uh, okay, going back, th- thanks for that, but let's let's just s- skip over a little bit and go back to the visa situation. So people that are here, let's take the people that are here at the moment, the foreigners mm. that are here at the moment, and of course foreigners, and we do meet the, the girl of our choice and, and, and we want to be together and we want to... Uh, marriage visa still going ahead, yeah? Marriages, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's business as normal. Yeah, that that's, that's w- within Thailand. Yeah. It's, um it's funny. Today, I had, um, a couple come in and they said, you know, we want a visa to go to the UK on holiday, mm. but we know it's not going to happen till next year. Right. I said, and who told you that then? I said because it's a damn sight easier for your wife to go to the UK and abroad than it is for your husband to come here. True. And, you know, we, after I sat down with them, they didn't realise that, you know, if, why, while these guys are sat back at home thinking, how am I going to get to Thailand? Why not go, if you've got a girlfriend, why not bring her over there? Mm. Go the other way. It's not impossible. No. The, the only requirement for a Thai, really, apart from what we've always done, um, is that she has to spend two weeks in quarantine uh, Self quarantine in yeah, I was your gonna, home. I, I was going to say that because um, I know someone who's actually done that, and and yeah. she, she had to do self quarantine in the house. In the house, and that's yeah. it. But she'd do that anyway. She, but she, yeah, yeah she, exactly. she, she, she'd she'd stay in the house anyway. And you know, we've you know hats off to the embassy in India because visas aren't given in Bangkok anymore. They come from. The, um, is that still gone now? The visas in, in, in Bangkok. Yeah, in Bangkok. Yeah. So wait, Hong Kong is it or no? No, it's Hong- India. 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 Surprise, surprise. Yeah, British Embassy, India. New Delhi. <laughs> That's where the visas are coming from now, man. I also, I also, I mean, this is just something I just, just come into my head. He says, every t- this man said to me, every time I ring up in debt inquiries, I get an Indian on the phone mm. saying, can I help you in his Indian voice, yeah? He says, it, wouldn't it be funny if the Indian rang, rang up and a Brummie came on? <laughs> <laughs> from, yeah, from yeah. Birmingham with his accent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that would be really funny. Yeah, the opposite so, way so what you're saying? I mean, let, let me get this right. What you're saying is, at the moment, with the current situation, it is easier for a Thai yeah. to go to the UK, yes, than it is for the them guy to come here. To come here, and wow. you know, I bat, you know, I'm trying to batter it on my website and say to mm. the people, look, you don't have to be in distress in the UK. It's not a million dollars to get your girlfriend over to sure. the UK. 
there's no flight restrictions. There's no restrictions when she gets there, mm. as long as she's got a confirmed address. Mm. And the embassy are giving visas. So why stay on your own lonely, wait till next year when you can get your girlfriend over? The, the minimum visa you get for the UK is six months. So if you ordered one now or you tried to get one now, I'm not saying everybody gets one. Mm. But I'm saying if you tried now, it means she's there for Christmas. True. You ain't yeah. coming here at Christmas, not at the moment. No. We don't know, that might change, but mm. I don't think so. So uh, why why not try to go the opposite way rather than Yeah, because surely there is surely there is lots of guys now. Thousands. Uh, uh, th okay, let's go for thousands of guys that are sitting there at home who have got a girlfriend here, yeah, probably been with them whatever, yeah, and they're saying, I want to see my girlfriend. So what you're saying is that it's easier to export than import. One million percent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's it's great. though, you know, I mean, we've to be fair to India. Uh, okay, they they play ball. You yeah. know, they you know they're the very very good embassy, and you know they they're quick because at the moment there isn't that many people applying because mm. they don't think. That, they can that do it's it. available. Absolutely. Yeah. They they think that oh shit, you know, there's big serious problems in the UK. So there's no way I'm going to get my girlfriend here. But, but it, it's wrong. But there's that much. The problem is, and, and, and we're all guilty of this. There's, there's, there's so much stories fly about that, of course, the average person it's just it's just it's mangling their head. Where instead of going to the source like yourself at Kiwis and saying, hey, you know what, I want to do this, and you go, yeah, of course you can. You know, so, so it's as simple as that, isn't it? Well, it's the same old forum scenario, isn't it? you got guys writing on forums that have never been to Thailand. Yeah. You know, and sl slagging the place off. And yeah. It's just the same old story, you know. They're, they're listening to a bit of news. and then, I mean, I spend all day answering questions, to be fair. Mm. That's my job. Mm. That's what I do. You know, I mean, last month, it's weird, and I did predict it, and I said, we're going to be quiet. And the staff said, why? I said, because everybody's waiting to see if there's going to be another amnesty. Mm. If it's going to be extended. Sure. Okay. As soon as now people have started realising that it's not, it's gone busy again. <laughs> it's yeah. true. Yeah, As yeah, from, yeah. And there's two reasons. Number one, people don't get paid till the end of the month. So any visa that's available, that they can afford to pay for it now. Mm. And secondly, they've realised there's no amnesty, so they've got to get something done. Because people leave things to the last minute. And we've said this for years, you know, like health insurance and stuff like that. People come here, they forget about the important things, you know. What I would say is, if you're here now and you're thinking you've got no way out, there's always a plan B. Mm. There that's, is. And that's what agents are for. I mean, I, I did speak to somebody the other day about the insurance which I found something out very, very interesting, mm. actually. Um, he's over here. He, he lives over here, actually. He's been here two years now. But he's still got a, um, an address in the UK. Okay. Okay. And if you have an address in the UK, you can get what you call a backpacker's insurance. Okay. Mm. And that covers him in Thailand. As long as he's got an address in the UK, yeah, and he's registered there, yeah, he can get a backpacker's insurance. And that covers you for a year. No, it was that, it was something that it was something that came out. Uh, I was at the expat club, yeah, talking to a lot of people down there, which was great. Um, uh, they had a lot of knowledge, and I came up about the insurance that I had to pay out myself, which we mm. just spoke about, blah blah blah. And uh, one guy said, "Well, you know, this this happens, and this is what you can do." And I went, "Yeah." He went, "Yeah, I, you can do this. I do it." And I went, "Yeah, but they would never pay out." He said, "Oh, yes, they have. Mm. I've had two things now happen with me, and they've paid me out both times. But you must have an address." in the foreign country, registered in your name, that it's your your property and that you live there. That's interesting. Yeah, which I found very interesting. Mm. Yeah, I mean, my the, the thing is with me, because of my insurance and, and uh, where I was before, I was with Pacific Cross, yeah? Had a family insurance and then, of course, had the stroke and, and, they, and then I had to pay out, then it went up again and up again. So then when I went to renew... You're stroking that chicken now. You watch, you watch <laughs> you it, you leave my chicken alone. <laughs> for, for those that are just listening in audio, not video, it is a chicken. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, I mean, it was like, it was my insurance now is a hundred grand a year more they want. God. Uh, nah, nah. That's scary, yeah. So, what, okay, let's take a scenario. Uh, foreign man, living in Thailand, been here for ten years, got a family, wife, two kids. Kids got British passports. And Thai passports, 
wife hasn't got a British passport, of course she's only got a Thai passport, yeah. and he's got a British passport or an American passport or whatever, yeah. How easy is it for them to move? Relocate? Yeah. Back to the UK? Yeah. Okay. There's it's a, fi- a question that someone's asked me, sorry. Okay. There's a financial criteria. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a couple of ways around it. Number one is his pensions. Mm-hmm. Do his pensions amount to £18,600 a year before tax? Okay. Okay. Number two is you can go with savings. Now, a lot of people have don't have savings, but a lot of people have property. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are going to sell the property and put the money in the bank. Okay. Okay, mm-hmm. which a lot do. So you have to show um, £62,500 in the bank for six months. Okay. Okay. Now, they're the two options. A lot of people that are living in the UK are working. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so what they do is they show their salary income. Yeah. Plus sure. the P60. To show or if they're self-employed, they can show that. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, they can show the, um, you know, the, the tax returns and mm-hmm. the SA three hundred twos and all the usual stuff that goes with it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it can be done, and we've done it for loads of people. Mm. It's, I mean, a, it's an interesting question. It's, um, I mean, there's, there was, you know, one gang of guys who used to hang around uh, Patty. How they was all working at one time. Then Patty went quiet. They all decided, they all had kids, they all decided that they'd rather have the kids um, tutored in the UK to Mm. go to school in the Mm. UK. And they did all the visas at the same time, one after another, and they were all relocation. So let me me get this right in in order. The man himself, of course, let's take UK. Man himself is UK, got no problem. Kids have got UK passports, no problem. Kids got UK passport, no problem. So the wife... She needs a visa. She needs a visa, but she can stay there for six months, yes? Is that it, right? it, it depends. I mean, if they're going to go and live there, yeah, this is what this is what we're talking about now. Absolutely. Okay, this is the financial side for living there, not for a holiday. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, she needs a visa now. If you can come up with that criteria, mm-hmm. then you're fine. Uh, now, if the guy, another scenario, if the guy's working here on a work permit, and let's say he's he's working for six months, mm-hmm. and he's got a job offer in the UK, mm-hmm. we can use that as well. Mm-hmm. As long as it's what I was trying to find, what I was trying to get at is, I had a friend who went over the UK, went over there, um, took his missus, blah blah. She stayed for six months, but then she had to come back yes. for a period of time. Does that still apply? It does in certain in certain cases. <clears throat> now, if you've got children, right, and you go over on a six month holiday, if you've got children and they're at school, mm-hmm. then your wife can apply to the foreign office. Um, and the UK, what we call the UK VI, mm. for a settlement visa. So you can physically change now. It's, it's changed now, only recently, last few months, where you can change from the holiday to a settlement to allow your wife to live there. I'm just trying to get at it because these yeah. guys that come in on a sailing dingy, you know what I mean? They just walk on the shore and there's your house and there's some money and settle down and go, <laughs> pass on the back, how are you doing? I know, it's not. It's sad, I'm, I'm, I know oh, it's, it's uh, uh, it winds me up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's for a holiday. Going back to the holiday visa, guys, if you want to know roughly what they're looking for in your bank, about two and a half grand. That's all. That's all. It's not mega money, you know. She needs to show she's got some money in her bank, but you know, roughly twenty, thirty thousand baht. Is that all? That's all, mate. To it's, take it back? Yeah, on a holiday. Mm, so, interesting. So don't think you need 10, 20, 30,000 because you don't. Obviously, they do like to see that you're doing some sort of work, you know, so, mm, yeah. so that you can look after her for the period of the time while she's there. Sure. So, so, like, for example, like, you know, like if you've got a job offer over there and you've got already got a residence, you've got a house over there, for example, you've got, a, you've got an address there. I mean, is this, I believe that he had to get a, a letter to say where she was staying. Was that right? Yeah, correct. Is that correct. correct? Do you still have to do that if you're going over as a family, though? You still have to do that? Yeah, they want to know where, she, where she is. Because now everything's done online. So when you do an application, there's no written application anymore. Mm. You, you have to go onto the portal. That's that's another. Mm. This is another thing that we... This is another question that I had come in today because I, I sort of put a feelers out and said, you were coming on from Key Visa, Darren was coming on from Key Visa. Any questions? And I got a couple of questions back. So this is this this is just one that I'm going to relay to you. And that is that the, the immigration app, yeah, they've put an app out there that you can do the 90-day online application, right? Okay. Okay. A lot of people are having problems with this. Have you had any experience in this? 
Right now, we, now you've changed subject. I have, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm well, fine. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, For the guys at home, we've we've gone away from the UK visa. Now we're talking about UK, Thailand. UK yeah. visa, you're over there, you're with the family, good luck, you've got a yeah. few grand in your bank, you're there for six months, <laughs> see you in six months. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I'll do it for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Darren will definitely do it for I'll you. I'll definitely do it for you. No, yeah, the 90 day online app, you've just got to keep trying. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, it's run on an internet explorer now. There's a few guys that are very technical, you know, and, you know, the computer, yeah. you know, guys mm. like, like yourselves. Mm. They can get around it, they can find ways to, to get in. But nine times out of ten, you've just really got to keep at it and mm. at it and at it. The 90-day report is, for some people, seems like a big deal. But to me, you go in there, it's 20 seconds, they run off barcodes, you're in and out in no time. So it's every 90 days, so I can't understand what the big deal what, is. What I can't get, all right, I'm, 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 I'm sorry that I keep switching, and I'm just trying to go through the list in my head, so you just have to bear with me there. All right, mate. The 90-day the thing, let's stay on this for a second, right? You've been here, what, 15, 16 years, you say? 16, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've been here for, what, 40, 50, whatever it is now. Married for 13, yeah. So I've got a business. Yes. Work permits. Yes. Employ people. Pay tax. Do everything. Got a family. Got kids. Everything. And I still have to go 90 days and say, I'm here. You're still breathing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why? Because it's... <laughs> if you're married and you've got a family here, why? Because it's been... It's and a permanent address. Why? Because it, they've been doing it for 25 years. I get that. So... They've just never changed it. You understand? <laughs> it's it's they, they are the creatures of of repetition. Yep. Now nobody knew. You remember the old days? You remember the immigration office mm -hmm. on Soy A? Yes. Okay. You could fit about nine people in there. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if they were still using that place. Yeah. Okay. They're not. Bedlam. So they moved to the big place. They had the new big place built on Soy Five John TM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's still bedlam, but it's more bedlam now. Yeah, because you've got more people coming, mm. and that is due to boom, the internet. Yeah, fifteen years ago, nobody knew anything. Mm. Okay, this is my story. This is how I got into this game, mm. really. Because, do you want to know it? Sure, of course I do. Okay, don't worry. We've got. To, hang on, Bobby. We've got to be home for when Saturday. <laughs> 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 have a drink of water. Yeah, have a drink. Have a drink of water. Right, right. Let's just, let's is, there any, is there any vodka in there? Yeah, let's just play a little bit of this. So we do this. Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand, with your host Dave D. Join us weekdays. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com. Feel better now? <laughs> Can't stop looking at that chicken. <laughs> oh, do you want, yeah, I have a feeling the chicken. Oh, people will realise <laughs> I am the one I'm on about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> right, uh, let's let's go on to the the the, the reason. Let's go, let's get to the reason okay. why you started uh, Key Visa, which is known by a lot of people. Great service. Why did you start it? Okay, around about eighteen years ago, I was coming on holiday. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was due to a few old guys who used to come into my place. I used to sell boiler bits and parts and stuff like that. And I, <laughs> from being eight years old, I was. Working on cars, my family had a car garage, okay. Um, I used to love working on the old Ford Fiestas and Cortinas and all that. Cortina, this sort of stuff. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they wanted me to be in that job. They wanted me to do that. My granddad didn't, okay, um, because my dad left us when I was a young guy. Um, he he moved us away from, from Stratford, where, where I was born. Stratford. Next to United, next to Manchester United Football Club. It's from where it's where my dad's from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My dad's from there. Yeah, he he, th he was getting a bit rough, so he moved us away. We moved mm. up to Greenfield, you know, Grasscroft around that mm. area. Okay, um, and it was one. There is a there is a reason why I'm telling you this. So I'm I'm stood there on on the counter, and the day after I was going to Thailand. And this customer said to me, he says, um, oh, I've, I've just got a visa for, for my girl, for my wife, to come back. So I said, all oh, right, okay. Um, he said, would you mind taking some money over and paying the, the visa agent? Hmm. 
So I said, well, yeah. He says it'll save me transfer fees and stuff. So I said, yeah. So anyway, um, I come over, found him in Bangkok, <coughs> sat down talking to him, had a few nights out with him. And he said, um, you know, have you ever thought of working here? I said, not really, no. Um, he said, well, there's always a job here for you. So I said, right, okay. He said, I, I need somebody to help me. A guy called Jimmy. Passed away now. Mm. Uh, very nice guy. So he was here and he asked you... He, yeah, to... Help to, him. Yeah, to come in with him. Um, at the time, you know, like I said, I had a, a business in the UK, I had the house, da 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 da, da. Mm. Um, I got rid of what I could. I come over. I did two years with him. I learned the trade, learned everything else, got the contacts. And I decided... After a couple of years, enough's enough. You know, Bangkok and he was hot and this is in Bangkok, yeah? Yeah, yeah, correct. Um, just just round the corner from the embassy. So then, with the old days when we used to have to queue out outside with the customers and take them in while they had their interview and then that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's all finished now. Old man, love you, be all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd be <laughs> a few quid under the door. <laughs> yeah. And um, I said, right, okay. Before I go home. I'm going to go patio. I'm going to have a, a knees up for a for a couple of weeks before before I go. So I I got in a taxi, got my suitcase, and I stayed at LK. You know, LK. like we all do. Yeah, and so LK. Yeah. And I didn't know. It's just the driver told me it's where everybody stays Stay, around yeah. that area. Sure. Um, and I remember opening the the doors of the, you know the hotel. Yeah, and then it was on soy soy linky. Mm-hmm. It's soy linky, the soy linky before yeah. before soy Diana, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. And then it was bar after bar. It was just absolutely. There must have been three hundred girls worked on there in the old days. Yeah, yeah. And I opened the door and they're screaming, and I thought, <laughs> "What are you screaming at? <laughs> what are you screaming at?" <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. I was a young lad then. I you can know? sing, but it ain't that good. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I felt a bit um, overwhelmed, you know. So I went back in, closed the doors, and I uh, got myself changed, went over the road, got myself a beer. Um, within 30 seconds, I was being mauled. Um, and I thought... <laughs> was he nice? I thought, it's nice. <laughs> 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 he was long. <laughs> he was... Uh, no, it was... Uh, and I thought, I like this. Um, because in Bangkok, it's not, it's not the same. No, it's, it's not. not. It's the definitely same. not the same. It's not the same. No. Um, and... What happened was, obviously, the day after, I'm rough, got hangover. So I went over to Crazy Dave's for... Great guy. Yeah, Great yeah, guy, yeah. Crazy Dave. Yeah. Is he dead yet? I think he is. Did I he mean, passed away? Yeah? I, I think he did, but I used to go to Crazy Dave for breakfast and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I mean, there's, you know, besides what we say, I mean, there's a lot of good characters in, in oh, the patio. But he was one of them. Amazing. Like, yeah, Crazy Dave, sorry. Yeah. I, I, sorry and, to and I'm eating my breakfast, and everybody's talking about visas. Everybody. You know, it's full of falang. They're all saying, yeah. you know, I don't know what to do about this and how do I get a retirement visa? And they're talking as they're eating the breakfast and I'm listening to this. Anyway, after about three days and going to Canterbury Tales and different places, I'm thinking, everybody's talking about the same thing. Yeah. My job. Yeah. And um, I made a couple of phone calls because then, if you remember, there were no smartphones. There were no forums. There were no Google. No. Nobody knew anything. Okay. I was Google. I was the visa Google man, yeah? Mm. Um, so I went over to, to the immigration, and had a few meetings. They allowed me to do what I'm doing. Um, and I thought to myself, there's a niche market here. I can have a go at this. I can do this. So I found a shop in John Tien, which was perfect, as, 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 we, um, as we found out. Mm. Um, nice location near the Hanuman statue. And I run that place for all, about two years. Then we moved to Patia mm. on Soy LK Metro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I sure. was the last shop on there. <laughs> yeah, after all, I the, was going to say yeah. yeah after the bars that took over. Oh, it? it was it was full. I mean, you know, I had bar owners knocking on the door every day. We what a great space. place! So in the we middle of that space. Yeah. No, it wasn't. No, there was no wet park. Oh. Cause it was too busy, so customers were complaining. We've yeah. got nowhere to stop. Okay. So you got the older generation, yeah. and hence why I packed up there and, and I moved to Big C South Patia. Yeah, because I thought, well, 
that's right in the centre. Mm. So I've got the south, I've got the dark side, and, and I've got Patia, Tepesit Road. You've got the John T M area, and you're pretty you're pretty central located around and park can, and easy to get to and parking. Of course, you've got free parking over big the big car park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got, yeah, yeah, and outside the shop. So it, it was great for me, you know. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day. But it is true what you say. I, re- I remember coming here uh, on holiday first and sitting at LK Mansion, which is on, uh, yeah. which was at the end of Soy Bacow. And we used to go down there and get out, the, get out the room, go down there in the morning and sit and have breakfast. And, and like you say, ninety percent of the conversations were about visas. Yeah, it was. It, it, it was amazing that everybody was talking about the same thing. How can I extend it? Where have I got to go? Have I got to do a border? And have I got to do this? Have I got to do that? And everybody, like you say, had their opinion. Yes, and had their thoughts on their thoughts in mm. brackets what you should do. Yeah, so well, I, I, I was a bit of a guru at the time, um, and what I, obviously I'd, I met met Niels and Niels Koloff, who mm. you had in the other day, yeah, sure. and um, who's the president of the Expat Club, which was started in what two thousand and seven, I believe. Yeah, correct. I mean, I've been the visa advisor there now for fourteen years. Mm. Um, we, I'm also the helper with visas as well for the PCEC mm-hmm. and uh, public talks in front of the members, sometimes 100, 200, have done over 30 visa talks mm. in front of these people giving them free advice. So that's what that's that's it's where worth, we come it's in. Worth, yeah, but it, I mean, like you say, giving them free advice is worth so much to people because you, you, you get like, let's just say you get the expat club if there's 50, 60 or 100 people there, right? And you can say that well over 70% of them are not sure. Well, this is what happened. Yeah. At the Patio Expat Club, I got invited. And the guy who was running the visa desk, because they have a visa desk, was a guy called Peter. But he was a baker. He wasn't a visa man. He had his own bakers. And I went up to him and I said, look, if you ever need any help, I said, I'll do it. I'll help you, you know, if you want to rest. And he gave me the books. He said, goodbye. <laughs> And I'm, I'm like, off on the bread he run. Said, he said, I'll do it. I don't want to do it. I'm sorry, I don't uh, want to do it anymore. Wow. And I went, oh, shit. And Neil's come over and he said, you know, what's up? I said, well, it looks like I'm, I'm the visa man now. He said, oh, good. He said, because the speaker hasn't turned up. <laughs> now, I'd never done any Same pub- day. Same day. Same day. Now, I'd never done any public speaking. So he dropped, everybody sort of dropping you in the doo-doo on the same day, yeah? Correct. And you've never done, that. You've never done any speaking? In front of people. Never. Knees, knees clattering. Oh God! Then yeah. they were getting two hundred members at the McCure Hotel. So, but at that time, I mean, you know, at that time of him dropping the book down and Neil's coming to you and say, "Hey, you know, we've not got a speaker." How had you, how educated were you at that time on visas? Oh, I was good, was sharp, mate. Okay, good. Well, that that that's that's a bonus. I was sharp. So, so what he did was he said, <laughs> "And here's our new visa man," and I got on stage and all these people are looking at me and I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, uh, knees are going, jelly legged everything. Anybody got any pampers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and an hour and a half I was there. Wow. Just answering questions. And to be fair and to be loyal, I can honestly say that it was the expat club that got me on my feet. Sure. Um, mm. Because that moved on then. I was the visa advisor at the Scandinavian expat club yeah. many years ago with John Harum mm. um, before he passed away. Um, I was also I've, I've done a bit of the German expat club, so round the circuit, I'm, I'm pretty well known as far as people living here. Well, you know. so so at the moment at the moment now, of course, uh, you, you you're full of information. But I mean, for, there isn't an embassy here now in in, Bang, in uh, Thailand now for you, uh, British citizens, no? Yeah, there is. Well, yeah, they're still here. Where is that? They're at the AIA building in Bangkok. The AIA insurance building. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. So they've, they've, they've the floors, they've rented a floor. It's a big, a big floor. I'm going to say it's a big, it's a big difference from where they were, isn't it? Well, I mean, somebody offers you whatever it was, five hundred million for four hundred and seventy-eight million million baht for, for the land. You're gonna, you know. Was it was it baht or was it was it baht? Huh? Was it baht? Four hundred and seventy-eight million baht. It was. Was yes. it? Wow. Yeah. For, yeah. For, for for the land. The, what? The deal they did with that place paid f- for the o- full overheads for the foreign office for a year. Do you know that? Okay. Yeah. Wow. It was in the newspaper, yeah. And that's why they did it. I mean, I can't, to be honest with you, the only thing that upset me was the, at the time, they was going to throw away the statue of Queen Victoria. 
You yeah, know, that's, true. That's I mean, what we, upset yeah, me. Yeah, we've all, we've all, we've, all, we've, we've both been there, haven't we? So, co- yeah. Correct. And it was, you know, is the, you know, the 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 Legion Club that that got involved, and, uh. and now I think it's in some park somewhere. I think it's, you know, they put it in some some park and there were flowers mm. around it and stuff. But you know, people were saying, "Well, stick it in a container no. and stuff like that." No. The ties were going to put it on a corner of a road, <laughs> and we said, "No, you can't, you can't do, just do that. that. You can't do that." Man. You know, but maybe they didn't understand who she was, and obviously, um, so. They managed to find a decent place. And, uh, so how how sort of like um, I mean on a daily basis are you getting updates all the time? Yeah, all the time. All the time. All the time. We that's my job. If, yeah, I, if, yeah. if I don't if I don't keep this like you, if I don't keep up with what's going on, you know everything that's going on in Patia because of your new section and everything else. It's like me if I don't know what's going on. Down, well, it's like us. I mean, you know, you know, yesterday's news is today's chip paper. It's true. Which is, True. I would imagine, is similar in the pizza industry. <laughs> it changes. It, do, it it does change. Not so fast as us, but yeah. No, but you know they they've got a funny name for themselves in Jump TM. They're very well known. You know they're well known in Bangkok. Yeah. The the things they do, you know, um, to help people, shall yes. we say? Yeah, yeah, sure, um, sure. You know, is is well known, and it's been going on as long as I've been doing the visas. Yeah. You know they they don't stop services. That shall we say um, help them? Yeah, of course. They'll only stop the services that don't. Correct. And I've always said that there's always a plan B. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. don't sit there worrying about things. If you if you're in trouble and you know you really need to stay here for whatever reason, for you've got family, you've got kids, you don't think you can do something, then ask. Ask. Going back, just to thanks for that. But just going back to the, the, the I've just um, remembered what somebody asked me. Going back to the the, the, the girlfriend scenario. So if there's a guy now, you're sit- not going back, Dave, are you? <laughs> I, I'm, no, I'm not going back. No, I'm not, I'm not yet, mate. I'm not done yet. I'm still here. Oh, well, half of me's here anyway. Um, if if there's a guy out there now, or a man sitting at home, or anybody, even a girl sitting at home now, and they're saying my girlfriend, yes, is in Thailand, and I want them. To come over now. Now I know that um, it's, it's possible. It's, it's possible, yes. Your website is uh, Kivisa Thailand. Thailand. Kivisa Thailand. Com. Okay, we'll yes. put that. We'll put that on the link as well. So, until today, I did not know that what you've just said. You see? Yeah, it, it, it's frustrating for me because you know I can. I'm a Brit myself. Mm. You know, I, and I've got a wife, and I can imagine being stuck over there, and your wife's over, and you've got money, but you can't get here. And you think it's in, it's gonna you, without I've got, checking. I, I've got a couple of friends that are exactly yeah. like that at the moment. And you think it's going to be impossible to to see your wife for the mm. next six to eight months, but it's not true. Because I know that there was something in the news where there was only letting so many different varieties of people in to Thailand. You know, like you say, the doctors, the nurses, this and that, and then it changed again. I mean, that's it changes so much. Yeah, it's they're doing it on what they call a balloon scenario. Okay. They seem to have a batch per month mm. where they make a decision on who they're going to let in. Yeah. Um, so we just waiting to hear now on maybe there might be a new batch of certain certain criteria people that they're going to allow in. Where do you think where do you think the the visa stands at the moment? Now, now let, let let me put this in, in in sort of like in order, and then you can tell me if I'm wrong. Please just correct me. Yeah. So at the moment, when things are right, the tourists can come over here. They're on a thirty day. If that's going to still exist, if yeah, that's that, that, yeah. Let, let's just let's just okay. So hypothetically, I what's that the word? <laughs> that's too big for us, isn't it? What do you reckon to that? I tell you, got me got on my tongue stuck <laughs> stuck in the mic. Then. I was going to say, get your tongue out of that. <laughs> hypothetically, mm. is that right? Is that right? Is that Bobby? That's it. He's, hypothetically, he's adjudicator, yeah. by the way. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. If we crap it up, he just puts his hand up and says, "That's wrong." All right. Yeah, yeah. He's put it thumbs up. We're okay. Caesar says yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Get worried when he does that. Um, hypothetically, the 30 day before, let's get this right. Let, let me just try and put this in stages. You correct me if I'm wrong. 30 days before, you come over, you're on a tourist visa, you come to Thailand, you can stay 30 days, correct? Yes. How long can you extend that after if you're over here on a tourist visa? If you're a single man, yep. no time, 30 days. So you can extend it for another 30 days with yourself, Yes. Or immigration, yes. But with yourself, yeah. Yep. So you come over for thirty days as a single man. Yeah. You can extend it with you for another thirty days. Yes. Okay. 
Can if you're married with kids, yep. you can extend it 60 days. Okay. Married While with you're kids, married, married you, to kids, what, a tie? Yes. Okay. You can If you take your marriage certificate down or your children's birth certificates and ask nicely, they will give you 60 days. If you're only coming over here on holiday to see them. Correct? Correct. Okay. So with 30 days, normal person, 30 days, extension with yourself, married guy, another 60 days if he wants to. Okay, right, 30 days, 30 days. Can you extend it any more after that? No. Well, they'll give you seven days, but that's neither you say. So, we, so we're talking basically, in reality, 67 days. Correct. Ish. Correct. Yeah? So... They pay for their visa for the 30 days. They get an extension for another 30 days. Oh, the, the first 30 days is free. Free, okay. Pay for the extension, yes. Pay for the extension for 30 days and they pay for the extension for seven days, yes? Correct. And then that's it. That's it. Right, okay, got that one. Right, now, when it comes to the border runs that used to be with the vans yes. where they go to the borders of Laos and Cambodia and Vietnam and all that, do they still exist? No. They don't? So, well, they, they, they probably will spring up again. <clears throat> But since the borders closed, obviously everywhere they, they've all gone. But bef but before before yes yeah before the COVID thing. I mean, they they they, they, they okay. did they limit them. They limited to let me think one two two times two times per yes. year. Yes. So, for example, if you're over here. And let's go right. You're over here on thirty days. Yep. You can extend it for thirty days with you. You can extend it for another seven days. You could go to the border. Then you, can you go on a border run? Yes, get 30 days. So you can get another 30 days. Then extend that 30 days. Then extend that or 30 60, days. Yeah. And then go to the border again. So basically, you can end up really getting around about 10 or 11 months. Yeah, people used to stretch it. Is that still possible prior COVID? Is that, was that still possible? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, That's how people did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I get that. But a lot of people were saying with the border runs, um, oh, they're finished now. This is before COVID, even you know, and 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 uh, I heard, oh, you know, it's finished. You can't go there no more. No, it, it was massive. Was it? it okay, was massive, That's Dave. It, yeah. yeah, I mean, the Cambodian visa runs were, were I mean, yeah. <laughs> probably every other customer that come in my shop. So we're talking. We're talking. Wanted. Let's go back to March. Let's go, no, February. Let's go back to February this yes, year. So yeah. they were still doing that in yes. February this year. Yes. Good. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's put a lot of questions out the way that we got. Yeah. Because you know, a lot of people are under the assumption they're finished. No, currently. Pri prior that. Prior. Yeah. Currently. Currently, no. Yeah. They're all on, on freeze. They're all free. Yeah. No, but I think they will bounce back when the borders open. But it all depends. I mean, we don't know currently at the moment whether they're going to have a new visa structure. Mm. You know, when they when they do start reopening to tourists. Here's here's a good question for you. Here's a scenario, hypothetically, with my tongue in the microphone. Yes. All right. If you were sitting at the table right now, yes, and you, and you alone, could change the visa situation in Thailand now for the foreigners, yeah. A, what would you do? Before COVID, yeah, or now? Just, just forget COVID. Forget everything. Just say we're in a normal situation. Everything's running hunky dory, and you've got the thirty day, the thirty day, the seven day, the ninety day, the marriage, the whatever. If you could do one thing to change something to make it simpler. And, and fair for everybody, what would you do? I would aim at the tourist visa. Okay. The retirement visa is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three or four possible ways to okay. get that visa. Great. The marriage visa is the same. Great. So we'll leave them alone. So they're okay. Okay. They're, fine. they're okay. Great. Dependency visa, looking after your kids, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Tourist visa, why do you have to go to the border? I said this and I've said it for years and I've said it in meetings mm. um, with the big boys and I've said, look, you are putting 13 people's lives at risk, risk every day. Thousands of, run, you know, thousands of people may be mm -hmm. in high season running in these vans because of the road safety. Mm. Why don't, instead of sending them to Cambodia, because... You, most people don't realise when you go on a visa run to Cambodia, the Thais don't get any money. This is this is this it's is the where, Cambodians yes, get, right. get the money. So this is where I, this is where I'm going. I, I'm with you all the way here, right? I mean, doesn't somebody say we're not going to get political? But doesn't somebody think to themselves that all the millions and millions Why and millions don't we of keep bars it? you're throwing out the country? Yeah. Why don't we keep it? Correct. And this is what this is <laughs> this is the argument I've had for years. I said. 
why don't you allow tourists to do whatever visa the extension they want up yeah. to 90 days? Yeah. So they'll come in on 30 day free. If they want a 30 day, 60 day or 90 day extension, allow them to do it. So let's, let's hypothetically, let's just say that a Cambodian run is what? Five, seven, ten, what is it to, to go Cambodia? A couple of thousand baht. A couple of thousand baht, okay. So let's say five by the time you're finished, all right? So that's five grand, okay? Why don't you just say, here's your 30-day tourist, and every month after that is five grand? Exactly. People will pay it. And pay to Thailand. They'll pay it. Keep the money. People will pay it. Yes. Because they haven't got to get in the bus. The, the, I mean, the buses are like wacky races. This is what okay. I'm saying, safety for the for the tourist. Safety is about 70% of... Uh, of what they don't think about. Safety for the tour. You've got 13 people in there. The guy's doing 140 down a back road over the dirt on, on tyres that are worn out, okay? For what? To give the money to somebody else. Correct. Less, huh? less staff at the border. Yeah. You know, to, to cope with it. So I think that... Um, if they had, if they had like... Just get me if I'm wrong here. I'm just I'm diving in here. But if they had an... Im they've got the immigration, right? The immigration is the immigration, right? Let's just say that they had another place that they just... Just for the extra 30 or the 30s, yeah? So the immigration yeah. is where you can get whatever for the other visas and all that kind of stuff. For the tourists that come over, you have to go to this place and you can get your 30 day, your 30 day, your 30 day, your 30 day, maximum of, uh, of five or six or four or whatever. Then you have to go away for a month, say, and then you can come back again. Yeah. For example, wouldn't that be a lot easier that you could stay 11 out of 12? Exactly. I mean, shall we say the creatures are repetition? Yeah, I okay. Get that. They've been doing it for years. Yep. Okay. Now, when when big joke, remember big joke? Yes, I do. He come in and started kicking everybody's ass for mm. a year, mm. closing this down, closing that down, mm. upsetting everybody. You mm. know, mm. Um, all my Adidas t-shirts went off to Brazil market. You know? <laughs> that was a killer. That was a <laughs> that killer. Was a killer. Um, Baby, can you pick me up some of them? They ain't, oh, there. Right. They ain't any there no more. Shut no, up. I know, no. Um, we thought that he might change that. We thought that this might be one good thing that he did do, yeah. but but they didn't, and that was the last ma major changes. That was near enough two years ago. Nothing's changed since. So yeah, you're right. Do you want to stay thirty days, sixty days, ninety days, or one hundred twenty days? You know. 30, but if 60, they if they if they said yet. this, let me let me just put a scenario in from in front of you for a second. Say they had a special office, and you had to go down, and you had to change your visa, you had to extend your visa. It this at this office for say five grand, yeah. And if they donated from that, say one thousand baht to a family of designated, you imagine how many families would get taken care of just from that one scenario. You know, <laughs> the the reckon out of the forty million tourists mm. that come in two thousand and nineteen, yes. twenty million, fifty percent stayed longer than thirty days. Mm. So you no, imagine you the times money. that by five thousand yeah. baht, yeah, and you generate that money, and then look where that could go to. Exactly. You know, I mean, I just don't get. I don't. I. I just. There's no logic. I don't get it. There's no logic. I don't get it. No, nobody does, but they do. I'd, I'd like but to we, know we, the we, reason. We no. We, I mean, how can somebody sit there and you sit in front of them and say, "Well, excuse me, last year you gave away, you know, fifteen billion baht or something to, to another to another country. Yeah. Why did you do that?" Oh, because uh, what's the answer? There isn't an answer. Mm. Like I said, I've been in meetings. I've been for dinners with certain people, quite high up and well, really high up. Yeah, and I've, I've said it. I put it in writing, uh. and I've said, you know, it's why don't you put this forward? Mm. You know, to, to, you're gonna make you're gonna make trillions over the years. Absolutely, you know, but nothing ever happens. Mm. You know, interesting. It's, interesting. I mean. The one thing that we never under, could understand, you know, a couple of years ago when Big Joe come in, he attacked the the expats mm. with regards to the visa structure and how difficult it was. Nobody could get their head around that because these are people that live here. Yeah. These are people that spend money every day. Mm -hmm. What do you want to What do you want to uh, warn them away for? I, I, I mean, what do you want to upset them? It's for? like I've just said, you know, being here, uh, working here, visa here. Um, you know, work permit here, paying tax here, employing staff, doing this, doing that, doing that, doing, doing everything, jumping through the hoops like you do, and you still got to get down there in ninety days and go. I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still alive. You know me because I'm paying you every month. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what got me was the TM30. Do you remember the yeah. one they've just scrapped because of COVID? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, it was the same as a 90-day report. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this it's is just, where I stay. Oh, by the way, you got to do your 90-day report. Yeah, and this is where I stay, the same place. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Are you going to come back next week, yeah? I'll tell you. Tell, t- t- talk a bit more next week, yeah? If, you, why, if we're finished. If you want, if you want to carry on. Oh, we can talk all day, me, Dave. We can talk all day. We're, we're, we're on, we're on, we're on six, ain't we? We're, what are we doing? Six o'clock now, is it? Six o'clock now. We're, we're talking for an hour. We're talking all hour already. Wow. It's flown. It's, it's flown. unbelievable, yeah. It's flown. I want, I want to save more. I mean, I know you've got tons to say. Yeah. But I, I want to save it and break it up in pieces so we can do part ones and part twos and part threes, you know? Yeah, but I think it would be good to, you know, come on and... And you know, keep the updates. Look at yeah, one visa. Let's say, explain exactly what a retirement visa is. Yeah, exactly how you get a marriage visa. Okay, you know, maybe um, go at it that way. Well, let's let, let's do on uh, today. We've had a good old chat about everything. Yeah, so let's say uh, next time you're on, we'll, we'll we'll go. We'll put two visas on the table. Yes, yes, and we'll go into them in depth. Yeah, we'll yeah. have a bit of a chinwag as well, and also bring the chicken in as <laughs> yeah, well. Don't forget the old chicken. <laughs> uh, all right, is that okay with you? Lovely. Great. Have you enjoyed it today? Great. Lovely. You always enjoy it when the time goes fast. Absolutely. Even Thank the chi- you. Even the chicken enjoyed it. Great. Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand. With your host, Dave D. Join us weekdays. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com.